Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is December the 15th, 2022, and Moscow Police Department has released a press release concerning the Moscow homicide update. I wanted to just give you an update on the Moscow update that they released and kind of talk about some of the things that they have uh, mentioned in the update as well. So at this time, we all know that they're looking for a 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra, white in color, that was near King Road, and they may have some information that will lead to the arrest of the person that is responsible for the murders of these four college kids. So investigators are sorting through 22,000 registered 2011 and 2013 Hyundai Elantras that fit into that search criteria. And they want to thank the public for providing additional information about the vehicle. So what they're doing is probably going through the state records of uh, Idaho and seeing all the people that have registered a 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra. And they have to go through these 22,000 names to try to see who fits that criteria of the person that would have been there. That is a lot of work going through 22,000 registrants to try to qualify or disqualify people who they think fits into that criteria. Investigators believe the occupants of this vehicle may have critical information to share regarding this case to the people who have been driving the Elantra, who are the owners of the Elantra. You know who you are. You know you were in that area, and you know about this story, but the fact that they still have not come to the police and try to clear themselves is a big red flag. It's almost been a week, two weeks since they put out that report that they're looking for the Elantra. So whoever the driver is has some critical information that is needed to solve this case. But unfortunately, they have not come forward because if I was in that area at that time, I know I was in that area, I would come forward to try to clear my name. But the fact that they haven't come and clear their name is a big red flag. So take it as you want. Take it as however you want to take it. But what I'm saying is that person has not come forward yet. That's a red flag. So we want to talk about the investigative timeline. So a lot of people don't understand what happened or the story. They just hear what they read on the news that this murder happened, but really don't understand the timeline. And I think the timeline is important. And there's something on here that... I did not know that I just found out uh, that was put on this report that I did not know. So let's go through that timeline. On the evening of November the 12th, Kaylee Gonclavez and Madison Mogan were at the local bar called the Corner Club in downtown Moscow between 10 p.m. and 1.30 a.m. on November the 13th at approximately 1.40 a.m. That's the following day at 1.40 a.m. Kaylee and Madison were seen on the video at the local food vendor called the Grub Truck, which was that video that was circulated all around the internet where the guy or the supposed guy in the cap and the hoodie was following them. And so they were there at 1.40 a.m. at that Grub Truck. Remember that? And then they used a private party for a ride home from downtown to arrive at their 1122 King Road residence at 1.56 a.m., So remember that time, they arrived at their house at 1.56 a.m. Now, investigators have determined that Ethan Chapin and Zaina Kernodal were seen at the Sigma Chi house on the University of Idaho campus at approximately 1.45 a.m. Remember that time, 1.45 a.m. Ethan and Zaina are believed to have returned to the residence at 1122 King Road. Okay, so Kaylee and Moore... uh, Madison arrive at 1.56 a.m. Ethan and Zaina arrive at 1.45 a.m. All right, now listen to this. Detectives believe that on November the 12th, the two surviving roommates, all right, the two surviving roommates who had also been out in the Moscow community separately but returned home by 1 a.m. on November the 13th. So the surviving roommates came first at 1 a.m. Next, it was Zaina and uh, Ethan who arrived at around 1.45 a.m. And then Kaylee and Madison arrived at 1.56 a.m. So the surviving roommates came early. They came at 1 a.m., which I did not know. 
I thought they were the last to arrive at the house. But according to this report, they arrived first at 1 a.m. So they were there about 40 to 50 minutes before any of their other roommates came home. On November the 13th, the surviving roommates summoned friends to the residence because they believed one of the second floor victims had passed out and was not waking up. At 11.58 a.m., 911 call request aid for an unconscious person. The call made was one of the surviving roommates' cell phones inside the residence. Multiple people talked with the 911 dispatcher before Moscow police arrived at the location. Once the officers entered the residence, they found two victims on the second floor and then two victims on the third floor. Now, the coroner stated that the four victims were likely asleep. Some had defensive wounds, which means some. Some mean more than one had defensive wounds, and each was stabbed multiple times. There was no sign of sexual assault. Um, and detectives continue investigating where it occurred approximately at 9 p.m. on November the 12th to 1.45 a.m. On November 13th, with Ethan and Zaina were believed to be at the Sigma Chi house. So they're really focusing on the Sigma Chi house and trying to figure out what happened at that Sigma Chi house between 12, I'm sorry, between 9 p.m. and 1.40 p.m. So that, that time frame between 9 p.m. and 1.45 a.m., they're trying to figure out what happened at that Sigma Chi house. So they're, they're kind of zoning into that. They're, they're focusing on that Chi, uh, Sigma Chi house. Actually, who has been cleared in this investigation? The reason for that being is there's a lot of Reddit users, a lot of Facebook users, Instagram, Twitter users who are accusing people of being the person who committed this crime, uh, making threats online, and even going as far as going to their houses and stalking them. And the police are stating at this time in the investigation, detectives do not believe the following are involved in this crime. Again, at this time, in the investigation, detectives do not believe the following are involved in this crime. And I'm going to give you the list of people who they think are not involved. The two surviving roommates are not involved. Male in the grub truck surveillance video, the one that we saw that was following Kaylee and Madison, they are not involved. Private party driver who took Kaylee and Madison home on November the 13th. The police believe that he is not involved. The male Kaylee and Madison called numerous times during the early morning hours of November 13th. We know who that is. They believe that he is not involved. Any individual of the residence when 9-11 was called, they are not involved. The individual on the lease who moved out of the residence before the school year started and was not present at the time of the incident... They were not involved. These have listed all the people that they believe are not involved in this case. Guess who's not on that list? It's the any of the brothers from Sigma Chi House. We're not saying that they did it. We're not saying accusing them of doing anything or they were involved. But it's funny how they are not listed as cleared. Because they should have done the interviews. They should have investigated them already. And they should have cleared them. But their names are not on that list. So the only people that are cleared so far at this time in the investigation, detectives do not, that's strong words, do not believe the following are involved in this crime. And they've listed it, but they have not listed anybody from the fraternity that uh, the party that um, Ethan and Zaina went to. So at this point in time, they should have interviewed them. They should have cleared them, but they are not on this list of names. I mean, take it, take it as you, how you want to take it. Currently, no suspects are in custody and no weapon has been located. It's been over a month or close to a month and they still have no suspects. They still have no weapon. And they already cleared all these people so far. So it's kind of up in the air of who did this or whoever did this was really good or planned it out really good because they still have no suspects. They didn't lead any evidence or enough evidence to get them within that first four weeks. That is where we at are we are where we are at as of this point on December 15, 2022. No suspects, no weapon, no leads. Hopefully they can wrap this up pretty soon. And hopefully they can find that vehicle and try to get some more information. I think everybody at this point is just waiting to get some new information. 
to get the suspect. It's going on five weeks. And I think what I'm afraid of and what everybody else is afraid of is soon that the national media will drop this and stop reporting on this. And that's when it becomes a cold case. When people stop reporting on this, when people stop, you know, updating information on this. So I think every person, podcaster, the family, anybody's involved in this case has to keep this in the media, has to keep this going, has to continually talk to the media, continually give updates on on this uh, incident. Otherwise, if it starts dropping, it's going to become a cold case. So you have to keep that pressure on the police, on the people, on the public to try to find out who did this. All right, we'll give you some more updates later. That's all for today.